the head, the hyoid bone. This is a horseshoe shaped bone situated in the anterior midline of the neck between the mandible and the thyroid cartilage. It lies at the level of the third cervical vertebra. It is suspended from the tips of the styloid process of the temporal bones by the stylohyoid ligaments. It does not articulate with any other bone and it is held in place by ligaments and muscles. The hyoid bone can be palpated using a gentle grip between the index finger and the thumb. When the throat muscles are relaxed, it can be moved from side to side. The greater horns of the hyoid bone project towards and are in close proximity to the vertebral body of C3, C4. The mandible. The mandible is the lower component of the jaw. The body of the mandible is the horizontal component which also contains the alveolar processes or teeth sockets. The rami are the two perpendicular portions which connect to the posterior part of the body of the mandible forming the angles of the mandible. These are more prominent in men. The rami are about 7 cm long. The condyles form the articular surfaces with the temporal bone. The coronoid process of the mandible. This is located anterior to the condyles. They are pointed projections. They provide attachments for the temporalis muscle. All the components can be palpated, but the condyles and coronoid process can only be accessible when the mandible is fully depressed. In the anterior part of the mandible, there are two foramina which house the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The temporomandibular joint or TMJ. This is a synovial modified hinge articulation formed superiorly by a fossa in the temporal bone and inferiorly by the rounded condyle of the mandible. The TMJ is located just anterior to the tragus of the ear. It can be palpated whilst the mandible is elevated and depressed. This maneuver exposes the mandibular condyle under the zygomatic arch. A fibrocartilaginous disc becomes palpable during full depression as it protrudes during this maneuver. The maxilla. The maxilla forms the upper part of the jaw. It articulates superficially with the frontal the zygomatic, the nasal, and the lacrimal bones. It also has a deep articulations with the ethmoid, inferior nasal concha, palatine, vomer, and the adjacent fused maxillary bones. Palpate the alveolar processes, the zygomatic process, and the medial border of the orbital margins. Just below this are the two infraorbital foramen. These transmit the infraorbital nerve, a component of the trigeminal nerve, the temporal bone. This forms the sides of the cranium, often referred to as the temples. It is made up of four parts. The squamer forms the broad, slightly recessed area that is superior to the ears. The mastoid portion, which is posterior and inferior to the ears. Deep is the petrous portion and the tympanic part. The styloid process is located deep below the ears between the ramus of the mandible and the mastoid process. The frontal bone. It forms the broad area above the eyes and extends superiorly under the hairline. Superiorly and laterally, it articulates with the parietal bones, and laterally with the sphenoid and zygomatic bones. Anteriorly, it forms the margins and roof of the orbits, and superficially, it articulates with the nasal bones. It also articulates with several other bones. It also contains the two supraorbital foramen, located superiorly and slightly medially on the supraorbital margins. 
It houses the supraorbital nerve, a branch of the trigeminal nerve. The zygomatic arch is a horizontal eminence on the lateral part of the cranium that can be palpated through its entire length. The anterior component is formed by the zygomatic bone and the posterior part by the temporal bone. The posterior end is narrow, ending just above the tragus. The anterior end is broad as it continues with the zygomatic bone. The lower border of the zygomatic arch is more palpable than the upper, the parietal bones. This pair of large flat bones form the roof of the cranium. They are united in the mid-sagittal plane by the sagittal suture. Anteriorly, they articulate with the frontal bone via the coronal suture. Posteriorly, they articulate with the occipital bone via the lambdoid suture. Laterally, they articulate with the temporal and sphenoid bone, the occipital bone. This bone forms the posterior most part of the cranium. It is shaped like a saucer. In its inferior part, it contains the large oval foramen magnum. The squamer, or the posterior portion, articulates with the parietal bones via the lambdoid suture. Laterally, it articulates with the temporal bone. Palpate the nuchal lines. Locate the occipital protuberance, a rounded elevation in the midline of the occipital bone. On either side are the superior nuchal lines, which serve for the attachment of several muscles, including the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. The inferior nuchal lines are less easy to palpate, and again, this is an area of muscle attachments.